And welcome to another episode of Tales from the Podcast. I'm your host, JB. Here, of course, with uh, Ron. Who? Looks- I'm sorry, who? But Ron. Mm, no. You called me something else earlier, and that's why I didn't respond. Well, what did I call you earlier? Ronald? I, I- Ronald? Mm-hmm. Ronaldo? Mm-hmm. Did I call you Ronaldo? Mm-hmm. What did I call you? You called me the bad name. <gasps> I did not call yes, you his you did. name. Yes, you did. No. Yep. No way. I did not call you. I was watching name. Finn Balor, and you called me that name, and I was like, mm, "Hmm, really? That mm, name? That name? Mm, I don't think I called you his name. No, no, not his name. Oh, the name, name that I hate. Oh, that's yeah. the same one, isn't it? No, it's. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate them both, but. You know. <laughs> Anyways, man, how's it going, man? It's it's uh it's been a week. It has, has yeah, it? yeah, one week, just one whole week. Pretty and much. hey, I'm not gonna be here next week, everybody. They're gonna be talking about Evil Dead Two with somebody else. So I'm gonna tell you right now, ten out of ten, best in the franchise. Full stop. All right, let's talk Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> well, before we talk about Tales from the Crypt, hey, Sean, appreciate What's going you on, here, sir? Bro. And let's go ahead and introduce our guest for this evening. I don't know. He's such a hack. Let's was by. <laughs> he does have his own horse show, and he's also a professional wrestler. Um, I guess he also really likes Tales from the Crypt. So let's go ahead and introduce our guest, Tony Cuffington. Hi, kids. What's up, you guys? <laughs> How's it going, man? We appreciate you wanting to be on today. Oh, absolutely, man. I love this show. And uh, when I seen last week, man, with Patricia, I got nervous. I was like, oh, I better cancel. I was like, I was like what the fuck am I? I'm doing? not being pervy with you. Man. <laughs> so just, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, she says she's not going to be on no more from how pervy Ron was towards her. Whatever. What? <laughs> I'm joking. That, never I, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I'm not going to stop. No, he, he won't either. Trust me. We've tried and tried and tried. The only thing that we can appreciate is at least he isn't pervy towards little children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. There you go. So anyways, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you, Tony? Uh, well, huge fan of this show. But uh, like you said earlier, man, professional wrestler. Been doing that uh, pretty much my whole life. And you're breaking kayfabe by calling him his real name. Oh, oh, well, my, well, yeah, I am. I'm it, sorry. Be all right. we, we can break it for this one. I'm going to go through and re-edit it for the podcast. So over top of everything, I'm going to do like a computer generated like hack over everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways, hack, <laughs> why don't you tell everybody about what you do? <laughs> Uh, no, doing the professional wrestling thing and traveled all over doing that and made almost like no money whatsoever. <laughs> but uh, at the at the same time, like doing that, like when I was a kid, like I really wanted to do two things. And that was like fight people in a ring and like be like the best horror host ever, which is like Tales from the Crypt, Joe Bob. Like this is the stuff when I was a kid that I'd step and watch all the time. And then uh, next thing you know, I got this uh, horror show going, and it started taking off. 
Uh, first, I got in a little bit of trouble, got on public access and was completely banned from public access and several other places and finally got picked up by a pretty cool network. And now everybody's digging it like uh, different kind of horror hosts, man. I'm like Mr. Rogers for grownups because it's definitely uh, 21 and up. Like if you got little ones, please don't ever let them watch my show ever. I can Pretty see it sad. on your face, <laughs> Justin. Well, I can see honest. it on your face. <laughs> I can see it on your face. Just fight the urge, sir. Fight the urge. Fight no. the urge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will have to say that I am pretty curious about your uh, your wrestling career a little bit. Um, now, I obviously you're doing a little bit of like indie wrestling. I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much, uh, I'm going all over everywhere and uh, working for everyone. And I own uh, co own a promotion in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, Total Psychopathic Wrestling. And you can see people from all over the country uh, compete there. Uh, Very cool. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of deathmatch stuff. It's a uh, definitely a required taste. But also a lot of other people and uh, stars you've heard of, new guys you're gonna hear of. Uh, they're all passing through uh, right here uh, with me. And then uh, I'm moving around everywhere. Have been. And it's just, it, it is so, it is so much fun and I love it. But, uh, do, doing the horror show is, is just, is just the same, like trying to balance both of those out and a family gets a little rough, but, uh, yeah, I'm never going to stop ever. I, I, I so you're, you're doing more like an that. Ian Rotten type thing. Uh, well, Ian Rotten, like, uh, yeah, he does, uh, he does, uh, he's got the I promotion in India. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. does IWA and uh, love that uh, thing. But mine, uh, mine's almost like a buffet. There's something there for everybody. You get death mats, you get high flying, you get uh, all different styles all put together. You get bangers of just normal matches. Uh, guys, you'll see like on ROH, just those really good classic matches. And then right after you get something wild with some weapons. So everybody always has a good time. Uh, I know the fans... Uh, they really, really hate me. Like, uh, I can't count how many times they've uh, all attacked me and kicked my ass or picked me up and threw me out of the building. But I can't wait. We got a couple more weeks and uh, be doing another one. And then uh, hopefully there on the 24th, I'll be coming up y'all's way, headed to Detroit. And then uh, oh, that's his way. I'm I'm in AWA territory. I'm near Milwaukee. Oh, you're in Milwaukee. Well, to be fair, considering where he is, Detroit is more our way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your way. Still towards you too, Dick. <laughs> is it though? Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot closer than where you say you were, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah he said he's in Knoxville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot closer. Be be very close to me though. You're right. Yeah, less than an hour away. You could probably stop by here on your way through if you wanted to. Yeah, like, like Michigan, I'll drive to everywhere else, man. Uh, a plane is the only way to go. The only way to go. Like, it, it is terrible. But it's nice to, like, go to, like, Odessa, Texas in just a couple of hours instead of, like, 20 hours in a car. Like, I, I really wish I had money for plane tickets way back when. Would have saved me oh, a uh, headache and trouble. Well, don't don't forget now. If you have to travel on the road, just go to any 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 truck stop in the nation and get a Rand McNally's Road Atlas for ten bucks. You'll never get lost. Oh, oh I got one. I yeah, got see, one. see? I got one. I keep it. I You'll keep never it. get lost. <laughs> Too bad that's not the real reason Ron goes to truck stops. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, to find you there with your ass hey. cheeks spread open. Hey. <laughs> Oh, you found me. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Keep it up, and those pictures will get put on OnlyFans. I actually, oh, be only cornholes. As long as you give me a cut. So, anyways, <laughs> we are here to talk about a little bit of uh, tales from the crypt. And um, I will say that I, I feel like you are a little bit on the luckier side, considering the trend of season four near the end uh. here. Yeah, I know, Ron. I know. It could be worse, but uh, we are going to be talking about the episode Werewolf Concerto, which is uh, 
I believe one of uh, Ron's favorite episodes so far. No, but it is one of it is. It used to be one of my favorite things that Edge and Christian would do. Yeah, the concerto. <laughs> yeah. But then you start thinking about it, and it doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't it make any sense? Because okay, you got your head on a chair, and then you get hit with another chair. The chair that's going to do the damage is the one that hits you, not the one that your head's on. Uh, yeah, yeah you're probably maybe. correct there. Maybe, maybe it's I'm assuming you are at least. Getting a bat up with something. I don't know. It looks so. Anyways, this episode aired originally September 9th of 1992 and based off of the Vault of Horror issue number 16 comic book. Ugh. And <laughs> directed by one of Ron's favorite directors, Steve Perry. <sighs> don't stop believing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that Steve Perry. <laughs> Literally, Ole directed this in the TV movie Parker Crane. <laughs> it wasn't like he had a huge career. He did more producing, to be fair. Um, he produced things like Lethal Weapon 3, Die Hard, uh, Roadhouse, um, Speed 2. There's a lot of really He was second movies. unit on Rocky. Was he? Yeah, he was, he, was he, was a, he was a producer on one of my uh, one of my favorite films, True Romance. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like about right there with you. So, anyways, we got uh, Timothy Dalton in this episode as Lokai, who uh, plays a pretty fun part, I guess you could say. Um, he was in Hot Fuzz, Living Daylights, Flash Gordon, License to Kill. Um, you know, he's, he's been around a little bit. Uh, I think he's doing a lot of the... I haven't been caught up with it. I, I know I'm a little bit behind on things, but I believe he's in uh, Doom Patrol, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I know he does that. I know he's um having daughters. I know he's done some voices with the Tangled series. And, um, you know, he, he's done quite a bit of TV work, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, he, he's been around as well, obviously. He's a pretty established actor. Um, we I mean, also... this whole episode is pretty. F- it's stacked with with people that you'll recognize when you watch it. But the problem is, is they misuse the most important one. But we'll get to that soon. Oh yes, we definitely will. <laughs> so we also have uh, Dennis Farina as yeah. Antoine. What was that? Oh man, yeah. I feel like his hair was dyed even in 1992. Like I still feel like it was gray. <laughs> And they painted it like right <laughs> before the episode. One of my favorite know. roles of his is is, uh, is Snatch. Really? Yeah, that mo- he's so good in that movie. That's one of my favorite Guy Ritchie movies. Is he doing like Snatch is for sure. I think he is doing Unsolved, Unsolved Mystery. Let me look. Um, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he's not, because um, he he died in 2013. Well, then it's a very huge unsolved mystery. <laughs> right? How is he doing it while he is dead? So, God damn it, guys. That show used to freak me the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, we also got uh, Walter uh, oh, uh, Gotel. And this is Mr. Hertz. Um, uh, a View to Kill, Spy Who Love Me, Moonraker. He did a lot. Well, he was, what, General uh, Gogol? Um, doing a lot of the James Bond stuff, uh, a lot of TV acting with him as well. Um, just before Ron says anything, he's also dead. Um, <laughs> look at yeah. him, of course, he's fucking dead. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh, we also got uh, Charles Fleischer as Roger Rabbit himself. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he was also in, uh, um, a Nightmare on Elm Street. He played uh, Dr. King. He was also in Back to the Future Part 2. Um, you know, he, he's been around quite a bit he as well. He's also in one of my f- other favorite movies, Zodiac. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say is it Zodiac. And then uh, probably one of Ron's favorite actors of all time, and not to mention one of my favorite TV actors. Um, obviously, from anybody who got a chance to uh, check out the uh, old Ron Perti show, you would know how big of fans we are. Yeah, we love Family Lola Matter. Rashawn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who does it? We full-blown did a, 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 a nice spoof of it, which turned out to be pretty funny. At least we thought. I thought <laughs> so, it was hilarious. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> you got to send me a link to that. I got to see that. 
Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Do you still have it, Ron? Uh, I, I have it somewhere, and it's got to be on YouTube somewhere. So it's. Ba- should I, we just we'll, we'll tell people what it is. Essentially, what it is is we take the Family Matters intro for the TV show, and um, we insert ourselves into it like we're cast members. And then for the longest, <laughs> the run of, for the run of the show, we would talk. But it was the early one, so there was no Steve, there was no Jaleel White in it. So what we would say is that we were in the show early on, and when Jaleel White showed up, he. Uh, played the Urkel card and got us kicked off. <laughs> we got replaced by Urkel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see here, Sean. Respect the heck. Drinking straight out of the bottle. <laughs> Ron's the truck stop stripper. <laughs> yeah, but I keep my tassels on my nipples. Hey, Sean, I'm drinking out the bottle, too, here. Remember, right. maybe a Coke Zero <laughs> bottle, but still, it's a bottle. So right. Mine is... Uh, uh, well, I, I'm uh, I'm from the south, so it's uh, sweet tea. We'll say it's sweet tea. Okay, <laughs> we'll say it's sweet tea. I like that. <laughs> so uh, we obviously have a uh, Reginald Vil Johnson in this, uh, best known for Family Matters, um, Die Hard, in Family Matters, and he was in Family Matters, and he and... played an amazing role in Family Matters. Oh, you're forgetting one. He was also in Family Matters. Yeah. yeah, um, he's done a lot of other stuff, but let's be honest, the only thing we care about is family, family matters. matters. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're just gonna disregard the rest of this guy's career. <laughs> we need to get him on. We don't even need to talk about. <laughs> we don't even talk about horror. We just need to, we, You know, when I tried to get him on my show, I got no response from his people whatsoever. Really? Yeah. It's <laughs> it's kind of it's like when we I had a. Mixed drawn on, and all I could talk about was Hercules. <laughs> Dude, you're so you're so into Kevin Sorbo's cock. Oh fuck yourself! It has nothing to do with Kevin Sorbo. It has more to do just with his Tim cock. Ramey. Oh. Yeah, fuck you. Uh, we also got uh, Leela Rashan in this as well. Uh, she was not in Family Matters. No, so she doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have done the whole time for this. Like, well, this person was not in Family Matters. So they'll just move right on. <laughs> uh, no, but she was in uh, Any Given Sunday, uh, the big hit. Boomerang. Yes, Ron's favorite film, Boomerang. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fatal Secrets, Labor Pains, Knock Off. Um, you know, just a lot, of second a, lot banana, of a lot of second banana female roles. Yeah, yeah, no, nothing. I don't think she ever really had like a big role. No, you know, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And I then she know. had to sit next to the star that was Reginald uh, Bill Johnson. <laughs> right. So she got super lucky. Let's be honest. That right yeah. there was what made her career. Yes. Uh, we also have Beverly D'Angelo in this episode, who is also not on Family Matters. <laughs> but we didn't um, see her boobs in National Hampoon's Vacation, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she was in quite a few of the vacation movies. Um, also, American History X. So, <laughs> uh, the complete antithesis of Family Matters. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do know she did some um, some voice work on the the old. Uh, it's not really that old, I guess. It's like two thousands when this one came out. But uh, Mystery Incorporated, uh, Scooby Doo show that came out then. I know she did some voices for that. She's done a lot of TV work too. Let's be honest, um, but her her most famous work is definitely going to be like the vacation films. But yeah, it is what it is. It could be worse, and that's pretty much like wraps up most of the cast for this film. Like, sure, you got like a few other people. I think what Wolfgang Puck and Jason Rainwater and Mar- uh, Marcy Simon, but the roles are pretty small so i'm just gonna eh, glide over them and keep i will on. say though that sequence with timothy dalton and wolfgang puck um where he rolls off all this big fancy shit he he's making and he's like could i get a cheeseburger <laughs> it's like that's exactly what i would do that's yeah i was thinking the same thing it's like i do not give a fuck about any of your sauces but a cheeseburger does sound good all the fucking time I, I will never if, if if a cheeseburger is an option, I will not turn it down. No, it's the best food ever made. It's the perfect food. Well, it, I don't know about perfect because macaroni and cheese still exists. Um, as long as I don't have to make it, I love it. I'm not going to say macaroni and cheese isn't bad, but I'll take a hamburger over mac and cheese any day. 
What about Ooh. what about? And I've had this before. What about a burger with mac and cheese in the meat? You had that before. I have. Why? Why not? I'm I'm just curious and like what brought that up. Did oh, I used to. Did I, 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 I did make it. I did it. make it. I, I I used to watch Bar Rescue a lot. Um, much to the chagrin of my friend JJ, who owns a couple of bars here in town because he fucking hates that show. Um, but uh, there was one of the guys on there who had this thing you could buy where you get the the burger and then you put the thing in there and you squish it down and you open it back up and it kind of leaves a hole in there and the and part of the meat stuck on top and you fill it with whatever you want and then you close it back down real tight and it's already in the patty. You just got to cook it. Huh. And it was scrum and fucking dilly. And cheese in it. Yep. Uh, and I wonder why I'm a diabetic. I don't, probably because you fucking load your hamburger up with macaroni and cheese. What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, man? There's no way in hell that's good for you. No, but all the best stuff isn't good for you. Oh, well, fair enough. Fair enough. So um, before I go ahead and actually uh, talk about this episode, let's catch up on the comments. We got David here. <laughs> Since this episode is focused on werewolves, there's an 80s werewolf movie called Wolfen and I think it's supposed to say Reginald Val Johnson has a small appearance. Well, that's because anybody Please, who ever actually, made a movie. I think that's actually um, Reginald Val Johnson's evil twin, Reginald Regaland. Regaland? Yes, evil Regal, twin. Regaland Val Johnson. Right. Who did have an appearance in Family Matters. No, yeah. <laughs> he didn't show up in Family Matters either. So fuck him too. <laughs> right uh family matters the spin the spin-off show of perfect strangers yes indeed all right david was and, a little late with this one yeah yeah he was so unfortunately i'm not gonna go ahead and touch that so anyways to talk about this episode this episode is a, a fairly cut and dry episode to be a hundred percent honest with you there's not like a um i guess a huge plot to this one it's it, it is a fun one that's for sure so we end up opening up with uh, the werewolf. Pretty much, we're seeing him, you know, go through and and the, you know, murdering somebody. And then we cut to the what was it like a hotel? It's like a fancier cabin in the woods, kind of hotel type thing. And they're sitting there talking about how they have somebody who's going to be hunting this that werewolf down. And um, then we end up meeting. Um, Oh, what's his face already? Look, I, and it's um, eh, it, it, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, he he kind of has like his whole little, like attitude there towards everything that he's doing, and kind of he's he's kind of snobby too in a way. But um, he ends up um, kind of interrogating people here and there, and then you that's where you see like your original Val Johnson at the dinner table and stuff. Um, you know, he kind of like goes after Beverly D'Angelo's character a bit, trying to uh, see her in the bathtub at midnight type thing, which uh, I think Ron tries to do all the time to anyone he can. I always catch you. No, that's on purpose. That's different. Well, I mean, don't tell your wife. She already knows. Well, that's why the window's <laughs> always open. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, not being able to really do much about <laughs> you know the, this werewolf situation. He's in there looking for Beverly D'Angelo's character. I think he's kind of fixated on like her being who she's looking for. She, but um, while this is going on, he ends up seeing somebody out in the woods and um, goes out there and ends up figuring out, like thinking that this person was. Like, but the light. Well, we I guess we're kind of like under the impression that he's going for the werewolf. Is at this point in time we really don't know too much of like what's really going on, and with him going and attacking this person and stealing, well, see, yeah, he, yeah, that's stealing when you go and take his money after you fucking go and shoot him in the head. <laughs> um, but and can uh, we talk about that headshot? How horrible it looked until afterwards. Uh, we can when we talk about what we thought about the episode. Okay. <laughs> so uh after going and killing him he goes back and he you know, three figures out that he was actually um he was an fbi agent right no nazi war criminal well i thought he was going for the nazi war criminal because there was a message for the fbi agents there 
I, 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 I'll be honest. At that point, I was starting to tune out <sighs> because Reginald Val Johnson was on screen. Anyways, <laughs> he ends up realizing he made a mistake. And then he starts to uh, pretty much go back up for um, Beverly D'Angelo's room again. And while up there, uh, ends up killing the maid, um, just like pounding her into a piano, as you do to your maid. Yeah. And well, <laughs> and he's sitting there trying to just pretty much find her. Um, he ends up also turning into a werewolf, and that's when you we finally get the whole realization that this is our werewolf the whole time. Um, especially after his whole interrogation process with uh, Reginald's little girlfriend there, and how he was like, "Well, maybe the werewolf's a she," and all this stuff, and he's just kind of bullshitting them, just taking him along on the ride for it, I guess. But um, as he's trying to figure out where she is, um, she kind of just comes up behind him while he's howling and shoves a, like, what is it, like a silver candle holder something right through him. Something like and, that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I guess we get a little bit of a hint at what she is and everything afterwards because she starts to lick the blood a little bit. And um, talk about how she will take him up on breakfast. Uh, opens her mouth. She has fangs. And that's the end of our episode. Pretty cut and dry. And then I woke uh, up. And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, anyways, uh, this week, Ron had the pleasure of going able to uh, go through There's the... no pleasure in fucking Whoville tonight, sir. No. Uh, Mighty Casey <laughs> has struck out. All right. So, the comic book. <laughs> in the comic book, everybody got out of the hotel. All right, because I know in this one, he's like, you can't go anywhere because there's a mudslide, but the cops can't even get here. Yeah, no shit. But uh, so everybody did get out. Business was bad. And uh, uh, instead of it being somebody who was staying at the hotel, the werewolf was the owner of the hotel uh, and the woman he hired to bring people in as a pianist. Uh, <laughs> pianist. Um uh, was the you know she was the vampire and it, it was just real it was even more cut and dry um much like betty white's vagina and um i've actually heard the opposite about that oh really well i'll be uh i'll be back in about five minutes no um <laughs> um but uh it was it was very simple very done um and it was almost the only thing that was the same was the werewolf and the vampire thing really Really, that's that was it. it. About it, yeah. Well, that's kind of sad. <laughs> Nothing else the same at all. Not just Aww. not really. No, everybody got out of the hotel, and this plus the, the hotel was in Eastern Europe. So, well, it could have been here. We don't know. No, it says it said the like countries from Eastern Europe in the comic. Oh, yeah. So they actually made sure to say that's where it was. She made sure to say that it's not from the states. Well, the, the, like I said, they didn't say it was in the states in this one. So you, no, you but everybody, know. everybody uh, spoke English, and Reginald Bell Johnson was there, and we all know how how <laughs> kindly how kindly backwoods folk take to to, to African Americans. Uh, well, to be fair, this isn't just a this is Reginald Bell Johnson. He's different. <laughs> oh, he's just <laughs> if he had been around during the sixties, none of this would have happened. <laughs> Don't quote me on that, but he might, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the world may be a different place if he was. Yeah, well, so, maybe. Maybe. So anyway, he's a, Reginald Bell Johnson is like the wild stallion song from Bill and Ted. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense in a way. I, I, I can't be mad about it. I can't. You know, the, I'm starting right now, I'm gonna start a new podcast where all I do is talk about how uh, films that Reginald Vell Johnson could have improved by being in. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yep. I, I got Reginald Vell podcast. Yeah, there's so many ideas that you could go with on that. Oh yes. Too. And I He'd mean, be so much better if he was in Die Hard. Die Hard would have been a good movie then. Yeah. <laughs> you have to start talking shit about some of the most iconic stuff. Well, it's like, yeah, Rocky could have been better. If Reginald Vell Johnson was if in he it. played Apollo Creed. 
I love it. I don't see how you can go wrong with that you at can. all. You can. And then eventually it's gonna he's gonna take notice of it, I'm sure. Um <laughs> I don't know. I doubt it. The Reginald Vell podcast. That's what I'm calling it. Boom. <laughs> Do you think he would? Maybe. If I'm I tag him sure. in it on Twitter. You're talking about a man who is what? Yes, yeah, I know. That's the whole point, maybe. David. That's the whole point. <laughs> More of him would have made the movie better. <laughs> I love how I love like, how sarcasm is completely <laughs> lost on people. Uh, are you surprised? No, not at all. <laughs> so anyways, um, that's pretty much our description of the episode and discussion of the comic book. So we're going to jump right into what we thought about this episode and giving a, a ranking between one and ten. Hack, would you like to go first, buddy? Oh, man. Yeah. Well, we're, we're at the beginning there, the whole episode with the, the elevator music playing. And it's like some like really <laughs> like uh, hotel murder mystery thing going. Oh man! And then uh, especially like all the like weird twists. Like yeah, I think he was uh, a Nazi when he killed him. And then uh, oh man, that line when he walks up to him and he's like, "I was looking for a, a sweaty bald." like dumb fuck or something like that like that was probably my favorite line is when he just said that to him and i was like like you got the elevator music playing and everything's kind of slow and then like he insults the shit out of him right before he shoots him and i was like man that was a hard line he gave him right before he like killed him but finding out like he was uh he was the werewolf and he was like trying to hunt the hunter like, there were so many twists, like, weird twists. Like, I, I was like, what? The vampire thing everybody seen, of course, everybody seen coming as soon as she did that. But, like, it's like, oh, he's he's the werewolf. And, oh, man. <laughs> it's like, he's the werewolf, and he's looking for the hunter that's trying to, like, hunt him. And I don't know if he was really, like, a werewolf or more like a wolfman type deal. Like, he looked more like the wolfman than he did, like, a werewolf. Well, to be fair, I think the whole perception of werewolves earlier on was more of that look compared to like what yeah. they kind of turned that's, into. That's true. That's true. Till Twilight came around and fucked it up. For everybody. Uh, it's gotta be a- that's Ron's favorite movie. We're not allowed to talk bad about oh, it. Yeah. Unless you're going to talk about how much better it would be. With Reginald, Reginald Bell. Bell- <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it would have been better if he was in it. Like, I would have actually, I would have, I would have loved it. He imparted some Carl Winslow like, uh, like knowledge on everybody. (laughs) Yes. He would have started to do a puppy dog werewolf. (laughs) He starts scratching Jacob behind the ear. That was Ron's favorite movie. Oh, all right. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting (laughs) you. Oh no! Just that that music though the 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 just that corny music playing through the whole thing drove me nuts. I was like, I, I know it was made in '92, but I was like, it, it was like copy and paste something like from the '40s there. But uh, I, I still, I really loved it. Like his harsh lines, and then him hitting on her, like trying to see her in the bathtub. Like you got like this slow stuff, and then when. Uh, Timothy Dalton was like talking like when he shot the German guy, like he just blurts out like these hard ass lines, then does something, then it's like slow, blurts out another like hard ass line. Like I fucking <laughs> I actually really loved it. And uh I, man, I I should have watched it before coming on the show. I feel like an asshole. Like I'm going off memory from like when I like originally seen it like forever ago. Like I need to... Well, that's better than me, and I watched it like six hours ago. <laughs> so, well, it could, it could be worse, that's for sure. So, uh, where where would you at least rate this one on a scale from one to ten? Ooh, on a scale of one to ten, I'd put it. Uh, man, we'll, we'll put it. We'll put. I'll put it right in the middle, man. Right out of five. A five? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll put it right in the middle. That's fair. Ron, how about you, buddy? Uh, uh, while I appreciate the Agatha uh, uh, Christie type stuff, the murder on the Orient Express bullshit, you know, 
Inspector right. Poirot. I, I appreciate all that stuff. And right. I appreciate well, they kind of state that it, that's what it is, even about like through even like the IMBD thing. Right, right. Uh, and I appreciate that they went back to monsters like the Wolfman and the Vampire, etc., and uh, and everything. I it kind of bored me, uh, and uh, their lack of Reginald Vell Johnson <laughs> when we know they had him available. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to give this uh, a six. A six. A six. All right, that, that's fair. That's it's better. Fair. It's I, and I keep going back and thinking it's way better than like the Brad Pitt episode King of the Road. King of the Road. Yeah, yeah. King of the Road was fucking hot garbage. <laughs> that definitely showdown could have been saved by Reginald Vell Johnson. Um, showdown would have been better with Reginald Vell Johnson as well too. This show would be better with Reginald Vell Johnson, um, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Unfortunately, when I asked him to be my co-host, he didn't answer. So he was like, "Who are you, you. again?" <laughs> um, so I got but, stuck uh, with Ron Perti. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, these things happen. Um, but uh, I, can, let's talk about he the headshot. So fucked if he ever responds. Oh man, I know, right? Hey, we're right, not doing nothing. Let's we're let's doing nothing. Right I just, I we basically just said that he's bigger and better than us. So I don't know what he, you know, he, we're, what could he complain about? And we're all saying we're saying the civil rights movement would have been over a lot sooner if uh, Reginald Bell Johnson was the head of it. And we're saying that everything he touches is gold. So, right, might you know, we might be the only people who've ever said that about Reginald Bell Johnson. <laughs> I'm sure his mother would have said that if, if uh, you know. But right. no, I um, I don't know. The effects were kind of garbage too. Um, the transformation sequence was kind of done off camera. Um, yeah. And, uh, well, imagine how expensive a real good one must have cost. Well, and they, they didn't even have to do like a Rick Baker one, you know, from American werewolf. They could have just done something. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a six. Well, that's definitely fair. It's not a horrible rating, that's for sure. But you got to remember, I'm also comparing it to Showdown and King of the Road. So until we get to season five, I'm going to continually compare everything to King of the Road and Showdown. Well, that's fair. It, it is what it is. It, it could be much worse. Yes. Um, so I guess with me, um, I, I'm going to give this one a good solid seven. I'm going to be honest. Even though the story wasn't as good as it could have been, there, the, you know, we could have had more Reginald. There, there's quite a few changes that could have been made to make this a better episode. But I really love the idea of werewolves and vampires. Um, at least back in like a '90s time, and in a time before shitty movies that kind of ruined some of it. The land before so time. I, I appreciate the whole monster. The land before time. My favorite movie. I know. I'm going to make another podcast where I only talk about the Land Before Time movies. Oh, that's not going to be as good as Reginald Vogue podcast. <laughs> no, no. But I will try to get Reginald to co-host it with me. Okay, good. <laughs> Who had nothing to do with this. So you want to talk about movies that would be better with Reginald Vell Johnson? Yeah. Land Before Time is one of them. Yes. He would be the only non-cartoon character in them. It would kind of be like Roger show Rabbit. Up. He would just show yeah. up, yeah. Yeah, it'd be like Roger Rabbit, Cool World type thing. So, yep. you know, you got Littlefoot trying to get his little tree stars, and then Reginald Deville Johnson comes over and be like, motherfucker, stay away from my fucking tree. End of movie. Way yeah. better. Don't you know that I'm an officer of the law here in Chicago? You are trespassing. <laughs> I'm going to call it. Steve Urkel. I, I love it. It would be way better, that's for sure. Um, the effects were not exactly the greatest in this one. Um, the best effect that we probably had was that first kill. The werewolf like slashes at the throat, and we get some gushing blood there. But other than that, it was a, a, a fairly mediocre episode. This one right here is pretty much only getting a higher rating from me just for the simple fact of my fascination with monsters. Um, I'm just being 100% honest on that one. Um, I, the story itself is, yeah, it's like an Agatha Christie murder mystery style movie. Like it's self-described in the title. Um, it, it's, it's just a very kind of bland episode though. When you really break it down on the story, um, I do know that this plot itself has kind of been redone quite a few times. Uh, me and Ron talked about it earlier with, um, werewolves within is pretty similar for a newer movie minus the whole vampire aspect of it 
And they did a pretty good job with that movie, personally. I, I don't it think it got Ryan me thinking about how that. Underworld is kind of like takes the vampire versus werewolf thing. Yeah. You know, and they they run with that uh, uh, premise as well. So, yeah. but we get Kate Beckinsale and Leather. So, right. That's the Which, only thing Reginald Val Johnson couldn't make better is Kate Beckinsale and Leather. Are you sure? <laughs> Yeah, you're sure right. he couldn't you're make right. it better. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're All right. right. That's what I thought. He could always make it better. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I guess before we go ahead and start wrapping shit up for the night, heck, do you yeah. want to tell everybody where they can find you and a little bit more about you, your show, as well as your wrestling? Yeah, uh, you can check out uh, Hacks Horror Show, the show that really needs uh, Vail Johnson on it. For sure. Uh, it's probably the worst show ever, but check out Hacks Horror Show on uh, Vimeo, Roku, uh, Asai TV, uh, pretty soon the Monster Channel, and then uh, all kinds of other places. You never find it on YouTube ever, but uh, yeah, check out Hacks Horror Show. Free on Roku, free on Vimeo. I found it on YouTube. Uh, There's just nothing there. No, they, uh, they, Pretty much Viacom sent me a letter and was like, you're, uh, get the fuck off here, man. Like, go away. But, uh, Vimeo, <laughs> Vimeo loves me. So, uh, Reginald Bell Johnson could have saved it. I uh, know. I, I sent him a letter and, uh, he hasn't wrote back yet, but I'm still holding out hope that he, uh, that he does. <laughs> I, think, uh, you know, so I think this might be the best comment we've ever gotten. Back. Yes. This show is 10 Reginald Bell Johnsons out of 10 Reginald Bell Johnsons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, that was just a great comment. <laughs> you can, uh, no, Hacks Horror Shows on uh, Side TV, uh, Vimeo, Roku, all that stuff. Show music videos, uh, horror movies, and do a whole lot of silly shit on there. So if you're uh, drinking one night and you ain't got nothing to do, don't let your kids watch, and you can watch uh, my crazy ass show. And uh, you can check me out at Total Psychopathic Wrestling, Horror Slam, and a bunch of other places. And uh, check out Tape Worm Z from uh, Slash and Chill. I just flew out there to Texas to do a cameo in the movie as myself and uh, Jake Perry, the director. I, I begged him to cut me out of the movie. I was like, this movie's so fucking cool. And I'm the worst actor here, and I was playing myself in the film. And I was like, just take me out of the movie. I was like... Now, is it, is, it that, is it that cool? I mean, is Reginald in it? Uh, no, but uh, I will get his photo put in that movie somehow. Be a <laughs> just show up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I would count that as making a movie better. You know, we you shoot, we be... shoot, we shoot next Saturday. So I'm wondering if there's a, a, a if we could work a, a picture of Reginald Bell Johnson into the movie. Get a T-shirt printed with them on it. Yeah. No, that's 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 too far. No, it's not. I feel like everybody should have a Reginald Bell Johnson well, T-shirt. I'll have one and if for you myself. don't, you might suck. For myself, I'll have one. Right. Well, what you, what you need to do is, do you have any graffiti artists over there? Like, I know in this Toledo area, we have a ton of graffiti no, artists. No, because we don't have nearly as much crime as Toledo. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. So I have a question, if you don't, if you got a few minutes. Let's let's get into it. Who, what what, what got you into wrestling? Who was, who was your inspiration? Oh, uh, what got me into wrestling? Uh, man, I have to say, like, when I was a kid... Uh, all of my uh, family, of course, because we're all from the South, so all, everybody here loves fucking wrestling. Um, no, but I have to say, when I was a kid, man, I really loved The Undertaker from, like, the first time I seen him. I was a strange kid. Anything weird, bizarre, macabre, occult, like, always attracted me, and I come from a Southern Baptist, like, uh, family there, so I was a little Well, that explains a, a lot there. Yeah, that explains a, I was a little bit of the oddball, but uh, yeah, I love The Undertaker, and uh, I got a hold of uh, VHS tapes, trading those as I got older, and uh, Vampiro mm -hmm. was another one that I absolutely loved, and uh, also other people like uh, Briar Wellington and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, The Undertaker was one of them, and that was one thing that I just always wanted to do. I got like home movies from being a kid, and you see me like talking about wrestling, and then you see me like trying to do this like horror host thing. So uh, I was a very, very lucky getting to do uh, both things. Got to live both dreams out. Still living them out, even though they're uh, fucking killing me. Both of them. <laughs> well, stop taking light bulbs to the back. Uh, oh, I did. I did. Now I just pretty much uh, 
come out there and run my mouth and just uh, talk a lot of shit and start fights that way. But the the light bulbs and the tacks and barbed wire, that shit, uh, that shit I had to give up. Now I'll just go out there and uh, fight and uh, just just go out there and fight with them until uh, till my ass runs out of breath. And I'm like, okay, we got to take it home, guys. And they're like, it's only been two minutes. It's only been two minutes. I actually had a fun little conversation with JB earlier when I, we were talking about wrestling lingo. And I said cutting a promo. And yeah. he said he thought that I meant like the backstage, like pre taped stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. When they go out in the ring and they grab the microphone, it's called cutting a promo. Yes. Yeah. yeah See? The, the like I said, show, I just... Ron is definitely more the wrestling fan than I am. I yeah. and I will. I am unabashedly a member of the cult of Cornet. Oh, I <laughs> am here. part I of the cult of personality. The Oh man, uh, Cornette is—he—he—he's uh, he, he, brilliant, but he's also uh, fucking crazy, too. And uh, I've never heard anyone cuss like uh, Cornette ever. Oh, I mean, whenever he says uh, uh, like like um, come off a gold tooth, or uh, you couldn't get laid if you went into a uh, whorehouse with a fistful of fifties. Oh yeah, you know, shit like that. Yeah, and and you know, a lot of people will say to me, "Oh, you don't like Kenny Omega because of him." I'm like, I didn't like Kenny Omega before I got into Cornet. I I fucking cannot stand Kenny Omega. <laughs> I cannot I, stand him. I, I I have to say, man, like I haven't seen that much of his work, but the money and stuff that he's making, like, man, I I can't hate on any any uh, wrestler out there and if they're making it then i'm like i can't say shit because they're doing better than i am. well let me ask you this okay let me I, this is this is this is because you always look back in the day and a lot of the people who ran their own territories would put the belt on themselves or on a, on a family member because they knew they weren't going to take off with it you yeah, know like you know when you could trust uh, yeah eddie you, graham was a champ down in florida and Vern was a champ in awa and you know stuff like that you're not the champ in in uh in your uh fed are you no no, I'm not. Uh, See, and that's the th but that's the thing is Kenny is an EVP over an AEW, and he's running wild as the champ. You know, nobody can beat me. Blah blah blah. And I think what's going to happen, what happened at WCW, is going to happen to AEW. They're going to get, they're going to fly too close to the sun. They're going to burn their wings, and they're going to spend all this money on ex WWE guys, and they're going to, they're going to implode. Yeah, you always got to look at it as like a marathon in the long run. And, and Vince has way more money. And if you have anything going on, you cannot, uh, people say, why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? I'm like, well, it's way too soon. Like if you do, if you do everything all at once, then what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do the next day? What are you going to do? What's the, what's 10 years from now? What are you going to do? Right. And they can't right. like, they can't do punk and Brian right now. They have to wait like a year or two before yeah. they even get them in the same ring. Yeah. And, uh, they, but we'll they, see. And even if it is a year or two from now, maybe they shouldn't even do it then. They should wait even longer on that. They should plant the seeds as things are going along. But that's a, that's a lot. A lot of the thing is, is a lot of wrestling now. Not even AEW, and I'll, I'll or even AEW, and I'll fight people who say this. They're like, oh, AEW is in the long term booking. No, they're not. No, no, they're not. No, and that's the problem, man. Like a lot of like uh, this new age stuff is like right away. So the slow burn, the the nice good story build up. No, people want like instant gratification. So it's hard to tell those long term stories to get them to keep coming back, watching more and more and more. Then finally, you have this big, uh, giant match that everybody wants to see because you, you've done it. You wait, you, you fucking blew your load right from the get go, man. You didn't, no foreplay at all. Exactly. And yeah, not only that, but it's like, I remember back in the day, I was old enough to remember this when um, Savage won the WWF title at WrestleMania 4. He was champ for over a year. Yeah. You know, and no one, uh, and even at SummerSlam, which was like their mid, mid year, big, big show. Cause they didn't have the monthly pay-per-views. He didn't even have a match for the title. It was him and Hogan versus Andre and Ted DiBiase. So it's like, they don't do that kind of shit anymore. Every belt has to be on the, um, you know, I, okay. Uh, Colin yeah. says here, here they're booking they're uh, I'll put this up. They're booking hangman to, to dethrone Kenny that they can't fucking do soon enough. Cause I'm tired yeah. of his little mutton shot, mutton chop bullshit. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing him fucking talk. And then here's the thing that pissed me off the most. I'm watching the end of all out 
and he starts quoting characters from Family Matters. No bullshit. What? Yeah, he's like, because Adam Cole came out and that whole thing, and then he says, uh, did I do that? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to fucking reach through this TV and smack <laughs> your Canadian ass. Where's Reginald Bell Johnson to hit him with the with the Family Matters driver? It would have been better. Don't, don't it would have been better. I hope you don't get to him first before you do. And, well, and that's but, another thing. And now, correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, but them having Adam Cole and Brian debut within five minutes of each other was kind of a dumb idea. Yeah, like why? Why would you do that? You're gonna do it all. But now, as soon as they both debuted, uh, I wonder how many people would change the channel because they done seen everything they wanted to see that night. Yeah. Like why? I, would I, you I, I didn't even pay to watch it. I'm just not gonna lie. Yeah, I would. Um, yeah. I would wait. I would make you wait all night until the very end of it, then give you that. Because oh, it was the very end. It was the very end. But that's another thing is, and I understand the whole talk about like the title being the main event. Which is I understand, but I think that Punk and Darby Allen should have been higher up in the card than it was. Yeah, yeah. Without, you know, uh, CM Punk coming back, man, they should have definitely. Uh, that should have definitely been on last because that was that was monumental, man. It in was, Chicago. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was everybody was watching that. Makes you it makes you hark, harken back to Money in the Bank 2011 with him and Cena. Probably Cena's best match ever. Yeah, that was the that's the most memorable match I know. Between like both of them, probably. There. Well, there was those those uh, those um, hour long draws he would go to with Chris Hero in the Indies oh, on like a nightly basis. Oh man, Chris sixty Hero. minute Broadways. Can you imagine every night? Could you imagine that shit? Yeah, and Chris Hero is so fucking good, man. So Even fucking... though he gained a person, he's still really fucking good. He's still one of the fucking best ever. Oh yeah, nothing but nothing but love and respect for that cat for sure. Yep. But yeah, that's all right. We talked wrestling. We can we can go now. <laughs> Ron was real nervous that you were going to be in the wrestling stuff he liked. Oh but, no, no, man. Well, no. I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing, though. Is like uh, I'm Cornette's not a big fan of death matches and stuff no. like that. No. Um, or the high flying stuff. I don't like the high flying stuff either because it's like, oh look, they're standing there waiting for them to jump on them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That that gets kind of annoying because the whole the whole thing is man it's it, it's a fight so i'm not waiting on anybody to jump on me i'm gonna run up and punch you in the mouth before you before you even touch me you know and, and i think a lot of people will agree with me but you know how they're they're starting to do the whole um cinematic matches now yeah yeah i think the best one is the the the, the fight at the farm with the briscoes that oh. was the best hands down oh that was that was that was cool man yeah. um I, I actually have a cinematic match coming up uh, here soon. Um, I'm going to be fighting uh, Jason Voorhees, man, <laughs> in a in a casket match there. So uh, I don't. That know sounds like that sounds like a USWA match. That sounds like something Jerry Lawler. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, one night at a bar, I uh, I murdered Leatherface with a chainsaw in front of everybody, and uh, that was that was pretty fucking wild, man. Because everybody's like, "Oh my God, you just killed a guy!" Like. And I was so happy that so many people offered like to drive me out of there or like live for me. <laughs> so like, it's so, so a lot. Even like, though, I even though, this <laughs> even though kayfabe is essentially dead, there's still people who kind of like still buy into it. Oh, uh, it man. seems like especially in the South, people are still like they want it to be real. Uh, like man, like coming to the ring and doing the stuff like here in town, man. Uh, with those people. You got to be ready because uh, they might fucking fight you. Most of the time, it's like they will, they will get carried away. Fights a breakout. Like uh, they they've held me down and kicked me in the fucking mouth, thrown me out of the building. Uh, they make their own t-shirts and hacks a bitch on it. Uh, th throw shit all the time. Yeah, there's stories about Cornette having to go to the ring in certain arenas and he'd have a brick in his tennis racket because they didn't know if the midnight experiment the him in the midnight would make it back to the locker room without getting stabbed yeah just the other day driving on the interstate man it, they they throw shit at my car and they're like fuck you hack and i'm like i'm like hey man I'm like fuck you like this i is got my, my kids in the back <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, like what the fuck like it was an orange or something i'm like you fucking bastards like what are you doing like like i'm going home man like don't like don't be throwing stuff at me like <laughs> And, uh, that's we're going funny to the gas station you walk in and there's a group of people and they turn around and they just start going off on you and it's like well fuck you guys man i just needed gas 
and like a, a pack of smokes. And now I got to drive down the fucking road and go somewhere else because you guys are in here throwing a fit that I walked in. Yeah, there are not the, the days of of wrestlers like and I'm not saying you're not, but like the ones that you're scared of to look at them. Like if you like back in the day, you did not want to fuck with Harley Race in, in real life. Yeah. And oh, Haku, well, you've heard stories about fucking Haku. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, no, <laughs> there, there, that's the thing. Like a lot of these guys, like uh, a lot of these wrestlers, like you might think, like oh, they're just putting on a show, but uh, a lot of them, man, you got to think these guys were they will actually like fuck you up. <laughs> they're actual real tough guys. So if you ever come at them or try to do anything to them, believe me, it will take one second before they turn around. And try to fucking kill you. <laughs> like, oh, I believe uh, it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Not just Harley Race or Haku, but uh, a lot of them. Man, they are hundred percent like waiting. Like, if you touch them, man, it makes them nervous. So they'll, yeah. Well, don't, I know. I know. Wrestler. I think Harley got stabbed a couple times and still beat the fuck out of the guy that that stabbed him. Yeah. And it's yeah. like that's just crazy. Wow. Yeah, Harley was no fucking joke. And don't forget the promo. $25,000! Yes. Kabuki! <laughs> Anybody who can put Ric Flair on a wrestling. <laughs> you know, back before Ric Flair cried all the time. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. He's always been emotional. He's always been emotional. You can... Yeah, but not like this. Yeah. I got I got an old teacher who met him once, and he mentioned all he had to do was mention Scrap Iron Gadaski, and he started fucking bawling. So it's like, oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Whatever. That's fine. He does. He he, he does get really emotional. He does. Yeah. So, but hey, t- David, don't be saying that shit because Michael, Michael Buffer is going to sue your ass. Oh. You cannot say that. He will fuck it. He is very litigious. He owns that shit, don't he? Yeah. He got a copyright on that. <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> Welcome to the Rod Berti Talks Wrestling Show. <laughs> Not featuring uh, Reginald <laughs> Phil Johnson, Johnson. Yes. Which would make it better. I mean, I like to think <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I've only been I've, I, I mean, not, I, can, I did I say anything about that? I'm just, no, I'm not saying you didn't, but I'm just saying I've been watching. I remember I remember the first live match I saw was on my seventh birthday, and I saw Honky Tonk Man defend the Intercontinental title against Brutus the Barber Beefcake when they had their year-long feud. Year long nice. feud, and then I got to see Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus Andre the Giant. I nice. saw I saw Both Andre those live. Would have been way better with Reginald Val Johnson. Yes. Well, yeah, you're right. I know I am. Yeah. I know I am. So, <laughs> anyways, Hackman, I I want to say thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to be on here, talk wrestling with us, talk horror with us, and most importantly, talking some tales from the grip. Absolutely. It's uh, always a pleasure to have anybody on, especially somebody like you, who is clearly such a big fan of the show itself, too. Oh, yeah. um, definitely have to get you on again at some point in time, for sure. Please. <laughs> um, and for uh, anybody who's going to be listening to this at a later time, all the links to everything that he mentioned will be into the show notes. I will definitely be messaging him later, being like, email me all those links. So I got them. Yeah. But don't worry about that. They will all be in the show notes and everything, and it'd be good to go. So, um, all right. Uh, is there anything else, Hack, that you want to go ahead and add before I drop you down below and we wrap the show up? Uh, no, man. Just thank you all for having me on, and uh, I really fucking loved it. And I'll be listening next week, and uh, to the better guests that you have on, or everything else. To be fair, every other week we alternate. So we'll do Tales from the Script this week, and then we do a random horror movie with the other show. So this is Tales from the Podcast, and the other show is called Two G One C, Two Guys One Crypt. Yes. And uh, we are going through the Evil Dead films at the moment. So we'll be talking about Evil Dead 2 next week. And I get a week off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nobody's Austin. happier about that than the fans. Austin's here. Oh, shit. I'm late, damn it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, if it means anything to anybody, I have uh, posted it a few times in our group on our page. Uh, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time is going to be our new stand- our starting time on Friday nights. Uh, me and Ron are both getting old, and we want more time to sleep. So there we go. I need more porn so, <laughs> time. Ron needs more porn time. It's what I puts me more... to sleep. Everybody does. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. So, anyways, thank you, Hack. I appreciate you very much. Uh, feel free to stay down below, and uh, we'll be there in a minute if you uh still there. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So there we go, man. Another one down. I believe we only have like what one more episode of this uh, season. I don't think we? so. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I haven't been keeping t- tabs. I've been uh, having to rehire people because they drop out. So, eh, well, you'll have that. Yeah, we got um, curiosity killed as our next one. Ooh, that should about be about cats. Uh, let's see. I will read the description of this one for you, Ron. Sean, it, it's at Chuck will be here next week, and so don't uh, you don't they don't need you whether or not they want you on <laughs> is a whole other story. Let's see here. Um, I kind of wish Chuck was here now so he could he could speak to Hack and Hack could be like, "Whoa, Hulk Hogan's here!" Right? Because he talks like this, brother. Brother, a bitter elderly woman learns that her husband and laid back couple and a laid back couple are hiding a youth potion from her. While camping in the wilderness. Um, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Young pussy. Was, ooh, Ron's favorite kind. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, but we know whose favorite kind it is. I have no comment on said uh, accusations. You don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah, it, that's uh, <laughs> so. So when 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 another video gets made. Well, you saw how fast that one guy took him down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, man, is there anything that you want to add before we get the fuck out of here? Uh, just that uh, I'm, go- there, I'm going to the screening of I Dream of a Psychopomp on Wednesday in Kenosha. Um, don't Does bother that have me. Reginald Val Johnson in it? No, but don't then bother nobody me. Nobody cares. If, if, if you are there, don't bother me. I'll be with a woman. Uh, and then... Um, a guy in drag is not a woman. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, it might be Reginald Bell Johnson in a, in a, in a week. <laughs> um, no, and then uh, next Saturday we are shooting. So we're becoming Undead 3 goes into production. So I'm very excited about that. I can't wait to get uh, it over with. Um, if anybody's ever made a movie or knows anything about it, pre-production is the biggest bitch. Getting everything set to go. And then once you're on set, it's great. Uh, and then once we're done shooting, um, it's all a matter of post. And um, all I have to do is watch rough cuts and uh, make sure that, that cer- certain music's been procured for certain areas. And uh, yeah, and then everybody should have who, everybody who donated um, will have their um, co- hopefully have their copy by the 31st. If not, you'll have it as soon as I have it. So. Right. All right. Well, I expect but, uh, that. But yeah, so it's um, we're going to be. Uh, um, yeah, I'm very excited about this, and uh, I want to. I want to thank everybody because I'm not going to get a chance to do this beforehand. But You're welcome. Wanna, let me fucking finish. <laughs> I want to thank everybody who did donate, and and uh, yes, including you. Um, and uh, I didn't. I, I really didn't expect us to get where we got and it's going to allowing us to get some really good equipment um like some super good equipment and like we're shooting in 4k kind of equipment um and uh, it's going to be like a real set i've got an assistant i've got we've got pas we've got uh, extras it's like a you know um and we had to get clearance from the cops for where we're going to be shooting. So it's it's full on. And I've been doing it by myself for 11 years now, where it's just like me and my phone or flip cam or whatever. Um, and uh, I'm just I'm so happy to, to have a crew now and people that I've worked with before and I'll probably work with again. And um, yeah, uh, and to not. Yeah, it's just it's kind of surreal, you know. So, but uh, I want to thank everybody who uh, helped make this possible. So, okay. Well, I will speak for everybody when I say you're welcome. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're we're a couple of old ladies. All right. So, anyway, before we wrap this up, I want to give a shout out to House Mysterious Secrets. Go to HouseMysteriousSecrets.com. Use our code four one three zero. Save ten percent on all your horror merch, and um. 
you know, uh, as always, uh, we appreciate everybody who wants to go and check us out. And um, especially the people who go and check out our merch, which is available over at tpublic.com slash users slash Tales from the Podcast. We have some pretty cool shirts on there, and they running sales all the fucking time. Get an uh, Uncle Ron shirt. Yeah, you could. You could get an Uncle Ron shirt. And Sean says congratulations. Well, thank so anyways, you. with that being said, the crypt is closed. Thanks for listening, kiddies. You're all a scream. <laughs>